So good morning, everybody. Welcome. Take something to sit on. You've got a little bit of height. Some of you may need more height if your knees are staying up high. Just raise your seat. Draw your buttocks flesh back so that you're on your sitting bones and your pubic bone is facing more down than up. Bring your shins to cross in the midline and move them further away from your body. Then just hold onto your knees and lift your chest. Let the base of your posture sink down towards the earth. And then from there, gently pull on your knees and lift your chest. Let your spine lift and lengthen. Roll your shoulders back and bring your hands into the prayer position. Namaskarasan. Just quietly close your eyes. Keep your chin parallel to the floor. Release any tension on your face by allowing the skin on your face to soften from the center line outwards. And let your eyes follow, softening to the outer corners. Try to breathe only through your nose, bringing your awareness to your breath. Just observing the breath without controlling it. your chest lifted to allow for this free flow of breath, prana or life force. Let's do the three arms together. So empty your lungs. Inhale. Your eyes closed and your hands together in the prayer position. Hold open with the invocation to Patanjali. If you don't know it, just sit with a deep sense of gratitude for yoga, the teachers before us, and where it originates. Yogena chitasya padena vacham malam shari rasya javajakena. Yopa krotam kavaram muninam, Pachanjalim pranjali ranatosi, Abahu purushakaram, Shanka chakrasi darinam, Sahasra shivasam shwetam, Pranamami pachanjali, Hare yom. Release your head to your heart. Let's have a moment to make your own acknowledgements and dedicate this time ahead on your mat entirely to yourself. Release your hands so that your palms are facing up, put them onto your knees. Keep your head down but open your eyes.
slowly allow your eyes to focus. And then raise your head. Take the support off your mat. We're going to lie down on the length of your mat into Supta, supta Tadasana. So as, as if we're standing, but we're going to lie down. Sit first of all with your legs bent. Can you just give me the thumbs up if you can see me? Yeah, can you see the full length of this mat going this way? Yeah? Okay. So legs are bent. Take your hands to the side. Just slowly lie back. Go onto your elbows first. Keep your legs bent. <clears throat> and then from here, hold on to the sides of the mat. Lift your chest. Tuck your shoulders under. And then relax your chest down. Lift your buttocks off the ground, just slightly curl the pubic bone up towards the ceiling so you lengthen your, your buttocks away from you. Place your buttocks down onto the mat and now extend both legs straight out in front of you so that your ankle bones come to touch. Let your palms face up to the ceiling. Just relax your hands so your fingers curl. If your head is tilted quite far back, just take a, a folded blanket underneath the back of your head, touching onto your shoulders. But try first to lengthen your neck so that your chin comes towards your chest. So you're looking down in the direction of where your feet would be. And now press your heels into the ground, press the back of your legs into the ground. Let your navel broadly spread out to the sides and back to the spine. So your legs are going to stay engaged in this action. So this is as if we're standing, but we're lying down, Supta Tadasana. Keep the legs engaging. Feel how the muscles are starting to wrap to the bone. Observe a natural curve or a do lordosis in the lower back. So don't try and flatten that area completely to the floor. There should be a space within the, within the lower back region. And now bring your hands just above you so that they are perpendicular to the floor and interlace your hands. Turn away and up so that your palms are facing up to the ceiling. Really feel how your hands are opening. Let your thumbs touch gently or cross if, you, if they don't connect evenly. Just let them cross, let them be soft. And now press with the middle fingers up towards the, the sky. Open the hands, feel them stretching. Straighten your arms. Keep the back of the legs pressing to the floor. And now inhale. And as you exhale, take your arms up and overhead to the floor. If they don't come all the way to the floor, it catches in your shoulders, just keep them up higher. Keep your arms straight. Keep your eyes soft and with breath flowing. Don't hold the breath if there's no instruction for breath. So for some of you, when you're pressing the back of your legs down, you may feel that your heels lift off the ground. So just stop that from happening. Still press into the back of the legs, but make sure for everybody, your heels are still touching the floor. Keep the front thighs pressing down. Navel broadening back. Slowly bring your hands up to the vertical again. Roll your hands so that they're cupping down towards you. Just keep them like this. Keep your arms straight. See that the one little finger is at the back. Just change that interlacing again. So they're still cupped. They're still joined at the web. Turn your palms away from you, up to the ceiling, straighten your arms, keep your legs working. Inhale and exhale, release your hands back and down to the floor behind you. Keep your arms straight. Your legs are still working. 
front thighs pressing back, shins into the calves, heels to the floor. Navel broadening back. Bring your arms all the way up and over to the floor and release. Palms facing up, keep your shoulders tucked under. Bend your knees, cross at your ankles, bring your feet overhead and then up, all the way up to sit up or you can roll to the side. So now come sit back onto the mat with the support. Cross your legs again into Shastikasan. So the, the midline, the midline of the shins. Knees, take them closer towards each other. So keep moving them closer towards each other. Lift your chest, hold onto your knees. Inhale, take your arms up, lift up, look up. And exhale, come forward onto your fingertips. Keep breathing, lift your chest. Create length to the front of the body. So from the pubic bone, it moves towards the navel. The navel up towards the sternum, chest lifts, but release your shoulders down, away from your ears. So keep this lift to the front of the body. Walk your hands forward to your personal maximum, reaching back into your sitting bones. Flatten your hands, just release your head so your ears are next to your upper arms. Keep your eyes open. Extending forward into the fingers and reaching back into the sitting bones. Lengthening forward to the front of the body, still reaching back into the sitting bones. Close your eyes now and use your exhalation to soften any tightness in and around the groin and the hip area. So each exhalation, soften and release. Let the back of the body be broad. As you exhale, let the back of the body soften and broaden, releasing. And then raise your head, bring your hands all the way back to your sides, lean back, change the crossing of your legs. So again, crossing at the midline, shins a little bit further forward, and then bring your knees closer together. So if you feel that your, your whole pelvic girdle is tipping back a bit, just release the butt, buttocks flesh back. Sitting bones are pointing down onto whatever you're sitting on. Hold onto your knees, lift your chest. Create length to the front of the body here. Inhale, take your arms up, lift your chest even more. Look up. Exhale, extend the length and forward, bringing your fingertips to the floor. Keep breathing. Lift your chest even more. Keep your breath flowing. Keep lifting your chest. As you're lengthening the front of your body, again, reaching back with your sitting bones. Maintain that connection with your sitting bones to your support. So keep that inhale and exhale. Walk your hands forward, reaching forward and reaching back with your sitting bones. Forward with the front of the body. Flatten your hands, release your head down. Just keep your ears in line with your upper arms. And now close your eyes. Keep the front of the body lengthening forward. You're reaching into your fingers, tips of the fingers, straightening your hands, straightening your fingers, flattening your palms. Arms are straight. Close your eyes. Use your exhalation to soften any tightness around the groins or the hips. Use your exhalation to broaden and open the back body. Raise your head, 
Bring your hands all the way back to the sides of your hips. Press down with your fingertips, fingers pointing forward. Elbows back, shoulders back, lift your chest. Just soften your eyes. Okay, we'll stand for Surya Namaskar, the sun salutation. Just take the prop off the mat. Amen. Stand to the front edge of your mat. Bring your feet together and stand completely upright. So as we were lying down in Tadasan, so now we'll be standing and imagine the floor is behind you. So moving the front of the body to the back body. Shoulders back. Front thighs pressing back. Navel broadly spreading back. And just bring your chin parallel to the floor. Extend down into your fingers. Lift your chest and inhale. Reach up with your hands, look up. And exhale, come all the way into Uttanasana. You can have your hands to the shins or fingertips to the floor. Take your head down, keep breathing. Bend your legs, step back with your right leg into the high lunge. See that you've got a right angle with your bent left leg and your back leg straighten it. Be on the ball of the foot, the balls of that right foot. Press back into the right heel, straighten that leg even more. Feel the inner thigh of that right leg lifting up to the ceiling. Take your hands flat onto the floor, step back with your feet apart, either Mukhaswanasana, heels off the ground, spread your fingers, straighten your arms. Reach up to the sky with your sitting bones and move your chest closer towards your legs as you take your heels back and down. Keep straightening your legs. So Adam Mukhashwanasana, downward facing dog. Look forward, come forward into a plank. Straight arms, straight legs. Bend your elbows, Chaturanga. Come forward and up, Urdha Mukha, upward dog. Point your toes back, so you're on the tops of your feet. Bring your chest through your arms, take your shoulders back. So upward dog. Gently tightening around the buttocks and the hips. Lifting the inner thighs up to the ceiling. Roll over your toes. Adho Mukha Just keep your ears next to your upper arms. Heels back and down. Raise your head. Step forward with your right. And then your left. So your feet are apart. Bend your knees and come up into Utkatasana. Strong, fierce pose. Move the weight into the heels. Lift your chest. Inhale, come up, join your feet and your hands. And exhale, hands into Namaskarasana. Release your hands to the sides and stand again in Tadasana. So completely upright. And again, Find that movement where the front of the body is opening and moving to the back body. Inhale, take your arms up, look up, lift your chest and exhale all the way forward and down, Uttanasana, release your head down. Bend your legs, step back with your left. So you've got a right angle now with your right leg. Completely straighten that back leg. And then step back, Adho Mukha feet apart, hands apart. Lift up into your sitting bones. Keep your heels off the ground to start with. 
Move your chest closer towards your legs. And now just look down to the floor so that your ears are next to your upper arms. Inhale and exhale. Take your heels back and down. Come forward into a plank. Be strong here, straight. Bend your elbows, Chaturanga. Forward, Vamukha, so upward dog. Shoulders back. Slide your chest even further forward through your arms. Then roll over your toes, heels back and down. Adamukha Shonasana. Reach up into your sitting bones. Look forward, step far forward with your left foot, and then your right with your feet apart, come up into Utkatasana. Inhale, join your feet and your hands. Exhale, Namaskarasana, hands. Release your hands to your sides, and just stand for a moment one more time into Tadasana. Excuse me. And then release. So if you don't have blocks, so some of us could can use blocks. If you don't have blocks, you can use the chair. You're going to do parch water nasan. So just take the chair just so that the legs are touching onto the mat if you've got a slippery floor. If you don't, it's fine, just you can take it right off the mat. So some of you, I'll demonstrate, will be going using the chair and then you can bring it closer to you. You can take your hands down, depending on your capacity. Some of us will be using the seat of the chair. Otherwise, you'll have the blocks. To put the blocks, if you're doing the blocks, put them to the right side of your mat. And then stand in the middle of your mat, stand upright again, Tadasan. Bring your fingertips together, inhale and jump. Take your hands to your hips for now, lift your chest and take your elbows back. So really open the front of your body. Turn your right leg out to 90 degrees, and your back foot in, turn it in so that you can bring your left hip forward towards the blocks or the chair, whatever you're doing or whatever you're using. Keep lifting your chest, elbows back, inhale, look up. Reach up with your chest, exhale as you come forward, keep bringing your left hip forward and take your hands onto the blocks or the seat of the chair. See if you can bring it in close to you so that the blocks are below your shoulders or the chair rung or seat of the chair is closer to being below your shoulders. Pause here. Allow now your left hip to come further forward and your right hip to move back. The left hip forward, right hip back. I'm doing the mirror image in case you're wondering what, which side I'm doing, so just listen to the instructions. Press onto your block. Lift your chest even more. Your legs are completely straight. So for some of you, if your heel is not going down onto that back foot, you could put a, a blanket underneath there. So you really want to press back into that back foot. So now either you're going to take your head down onto the chair, walk your hands further down the rung of the chair, or some of you may flatten the blocks depending on the cup. Lift your chest forward as you inhale, lengthen forward. As you exhale, take your head all the way down towards your, your cup. So bring your chest over that right leg. Lengthen from the hips all the way to the armpits. 
Let the front of your body lengthen. Use your exhalation to soften wherever you feel tightness. So raise your head. If you had lowered your blocks, just bring them onto the higher edge again. Lift your chest. Take your hands to your hips and inhale. Come up, turn your feet to the front. Move the chair or the blocks to the other side. Hands on your hips again. Turn your left leg all the way out in the back, but turn it in at about 60 degrees. So now your right hip is moving forward. Your left hip, the femur, is drawing into the hip. Elbows back, lift your chest and inhale, look up. Lift your chest even more. And as you exhale, lengthen forward, take your hands to the blocks or the chair. And pause here with your head up. Keep your breath flowing. We really want the hips to be level. So see if you can bring your right hip even more forward and strongly bring that left head of the femur into the left thigh, that's into the left hip. Look forward, creating more length to the front of your body. And then inhale and exhale. Take your head all the way forward and then down. So lengthening from the outer hips to the armpits, lengthening the front of your body. Some of you may have your hands flat onto the floor. That's fine. Keep your right hip moving forward. Left hip back. And there's this compaction with the outer hips moving in towards each other. Your hips are secure, they're level. And now just use your breath to exhale and release any tightness. And take your head down if you can. You feel your back round and round and keep lengthening the front of your body forward. And then raise your head, raise the blocks, look forward. Lift your chest, inhale, bring your hands to your hips, turn your feet all the way to the front and step your feet together. So if you're practicing the head balance, Salamba Sheshasan, you can go into that. For those of you who aren't practicing that, we're going to do Prasavita. So the wide spread pose, using the very back edge of your mat and then making sure that you've got some head support to take your head down onto. So if you're doing prasavita, you can do it together. If you're doing a head balance and you, this is if you usually practice it, go into that. Elbows back in Prasadita. Press down into the outer edges of your feet. Inhale, lift your chest. Look up. And then exhale, come all the way forward, bringing your hands below your shoulders and again, lengthening the front of your body. Shoulders away from your ears. Move your hands further back. Keep looking forward and then take your head down. Rather have more support that you can take away than less. Take your head all the way down. The top of the head touches the support. So if you're in press, you need to spread your fingers. Press down again onto the outer edges of your feet so that the inner arches can lift all the way up the inner leg to the inner groin. You've got your head down in Prasadita. Just feel that the shoulders aren't bunching forward towards the, the ears. Let the shoulders move away from the ears so the neck is long and soft.
So yes, if you're doing Salamba Sheer Shasan, try by lifting your heels higher than your toes. So draw your toes towards you. Feel how the back of your legs open. Take your feet a little bit apart. Keep the heels lifting. So keep them lifting a little bit apart with the, the feet. And now slowly move your feet towards each other. Let them touch. And now lengthen from the inner groin all the way up into the inner ankle and lift the balls of your feet. Ankle bones touching. Very nice. Keep that connection with the ankle bones. Your feet are nice and straight now. They're level. So you haven't got one foot twisted. Your inner thighs are gently moving back. Your toes are soft. So for the head balance, always come back down to the base. Press down into the little finger side. Press down into the forearms. Allow the upper arms to lift up. Let your shoulders lift up away from your ears. Front ribs spreading back. And then remember this compaction around the hips. There's this tightening, the outer hips moving to the inner hips, buttocks tightening. And then from there, lifting up, all the way up, the inner legs to the feet that are soft, but gently touching with your ankle bones. Little toe side moving down towards your hips. And then come back to the base again, moving all the way up. And for those in the widespread prasarita, just check in, feel if you're moving your weight too far back to the heel side. We often tend to reach back too far into the heel side in this pose. So dare to bring your weight more forward so it's balanced evenly on the feet, more towards the toe side. And those in Prasadita, the kneecaps are facing forward, that they need, but they need to be gently held into the knee joints. So keep your front thighs, your quadriceps, tightening and lifting up towards your front hips. So the knees are supported into the joints. And you, those of you who know you've got the hyperextension, then you need to just release that a little bit to not have that lock. But the quadriceps still working strongly. If you're in the widespread pose, bring your head and chest up, bring your hands below your shoulders and look forward. Bring your hands to the hips, inhale, come all the way up and you can heel toe in. If you're in Sheshasan, you can slowly start to come down. So heel toe in, step together. If you're coming out of the widespread prasavita, just stand for a moment in Tadasan. Remember, if you ever feel busy, uh, dizzy when you come out, you can just go down to the floor or you take your feet apart, hold your hand, your arms into Baddha Hastasana and hang your head down. Take all the props and everything off your mat. We will need them close by. So what we will need for this next one, sorry, if you are coming out of Sheshasana, just take a moment with your head down. So Adho just release the shoulders away from the ears. Never hurry out of that. So we all have different props and you know, just with being locked down, we don't have everything available. So if you don't have phones, have blankets nearby, um, you can have a bolster as well. We'll just see what you've got and a strap. We're going to do Ekapada Rajakopotasan. I love that name, it's the one-legged pigeon. And we'll start with the, the right leg in front. So your right leg is going to be in front. We bend the leg. Ideally, eventually, we want that, that um, chin parallel. But for now, you can bring the heel a little bit further back. 
and then something goes underneath that right side so that you can really lift up. So it could be a blanket, a foam. And for some of you, you may need more height. You may need two or three foams or blankets. So get into that position. Your right leg is bent. You've got something underneath that right hip and buttock so that you can bring your, your leg further forward. Take more height if you, if you can't. So come up higher. And then you're, you've got a bolster or something in front of you that you're going to go forward and onto that support. I'm hoping you can still see this within my camera screen. I'll move back a little. So it could be a folded blanket or towel that you're going into. Your back leg is just extended behind you. Your toes are pointing back. You're on the top of your foot. Press down into your fingers. Lift up. If you're on a lot of support and you happen to have blocks, you could have your hands on the blocks. So really lift up. Lengthen the front of your body. And now walk your hands forward. Flatten your hands. Still look forward. Lift your chest. And now as you're coming forward, you want your left hip to roll forward towards the floor. Extend forward and then take your forehead down onto the support. Keep your arms straight, your hands flat, fingers spreading. So for some of you, you may be very open in the hips and you're not feeling anything, then you need to move your foot on that bent leg, the right leg, move it forward. And then come down again. Close your eyes. So the sacrum is level, the hips are level. There should be no strain on your kneecap or that extended leg. So just adjust that, that leg if you're feeling any pressure or strain on the knee. Relax into the back of the leg, toes pointing back. And let your left hip soften down towards the floor, sacrum. Open, level, hips level. Use your exhalation now to soften any tightness. Release it. Raise your head and bring your hands all the way back to your sides. Just be careful here now. So this bent leg, just take it underneath you. Bring the other leg forward so you're into that sort of box position. Just sit back onto your heels. And move your support onto the other side. So now your, your left leg is going to come in front of you. Bend that leg. Slide the support underneath your left buttock and hip. And here, bring your right hip forward. Press down onto your fingertips. Take your shoulders back. Really lift your chest. You need the lift in the front of the body. Shoulders back. Collarbone bones broadly spreading away from each other. Keep that lift and the length as you walk your hands forward. Don't round your back. Keep lifting your chest. Take your hands flat onto the floor, lengthen forward and release your head down. So just your forehead is touching whatever support you've got and you can still breathe easily. Keep your right hip gently rolling down towards the floor so that sacrum is level at the back, your hips are level, and now use your exhalation to release, deeply release any tension or tightness.
Raise your head, bring your hands back towards your sides, press down onto the floor and bring the bent leg underneath you. Just come sit back onto your heels. Just take a moment to sit upright. Keep your eyes soft, just allow them to lower down to meet the floor. Chest lifted. Keep your, keep some folded blankets or towels close to you, as well as a strap or a sarong or belt, whatever you've got. Okay, you can move the bolster out the way. So from that one-legged pigeon, we're going to go into the face of the cow, Gomukasan. So those of you, if you have knee, knee complaints, if, they, if you have very painful knees or injuries, just move away from this. You can just rather sit in a cross-legged uh, Schwastika pose, sit on something, you could even have some support under your knees if you can't do this one. So I'll show you a fun way to go into it. So some of you have done this before, where we walk by onto all fours and we're crossing the leg in front each time. Try and lift that knee up high in the foot so that you're not touching your mat. Otherwise we tend to drag the foot on the mat and then we go back so like all the way that that way then the one knee on top of the other and we sit back onto the heel the other foot is closing some of us may here need to take blankets and lift up and put them under the heel so i'll show you from the side so we will do it together like that okay so come on to all fours have the blanket close by to where you're going to end up at the back of your mat so you don't have to fuss with trying to reach it and have a strap. Come on to all fours. And now start with your, your right leg in front and then your left, cross it over. Keep going all the way forward. Try not to touch the floor with the foot or the knee. When you get to the front of the mat, go backwards. See if you can make the circle a bit wider coming back. So reach back, wider. And then end up with your right knee on top. Sit back so that you're on your left foot. See if you can get the knees above each other. So for, if you are able to sink down onto your foot, that's fine. Otherwise, take folded blankets now or towels, whatever you've got. Bring the foot that's out to the side close into you. So you really want this compaction of the legs, compaction of the hips, everything moving from the outer to the inner. Your strap needs to be close. For those of you, some of you may need it. So go look at some. You've got your right knee on top. So now you want your right arm under. So take your right arm behind you. Take your left arm up, revolve it so that the palm faces back. This is where you may need the strap to reach to the other hand. Take your hand back. See if you can clasp your fingers. Move your head side to side for a moment just to make sure that you haven't got your arm jarring into your head. Your chin is parallel to the floor. Soften your eyes and just let them lower down until they meet the floor in front. Soften and defocus your eyes. Use your exhalation to release any tightness. Focus on the exhalation, releasing as you exhale. Keep 
carefully release your arms. Bring your hands in front of you. Lift your chest. Walk your hands forward a little bit. Stay on your fingertips. Walk them forward, forward, forward. Lift your chest even more. Reach back into your sitting bones. If you can, flatten your hands to the floor. Keep reaching back with your sitting bones. See if you can slide your hands a little further forward. Just release your head down now so that your ears are next to your upper arms. Just go to your personal maximum. Use your exhalation now. Soften and release. Keep the sitting bones moving back towards the floor. And then raise your head, bring your hands all the way back. Move the support if you have used one up to the sides. Take your hands flat onto the floor and just untangle your legs. So you come into that box position. And now go forward with your left foot and then your right foot. So bend the knee each time. Try not to let the foot slide onto the floor all the way to the front. When you get to the front, come back wider circles. And so when you get to the back of the mat, you're going to end up with your left knee on top. Sit back onto that right heel one knee above the other. Use the support if you need to. And now we'll add in the arms. So you've got your left knee on top. So your left arm will go under your right arm up. So take it and turn the palm to face behind you. Take your hand behind. Use the strap if you need. Realign your head, chin parallel to the floor, and again, soften your eyes down to meet the floor. Let them be soft. The legs are tightening into this entwined shape. Outer hips tightening to the inner hips. Chest lifted. Allow the navel to broadly move back towards the spine and up towards the chest. And then carefully release your hands. Bring your hands forward again, walk them forward. Press down into the cupped fingers and lift your chest. Reach back into your sitting bones. Keep the sitting bones reaching back as you move forward. All the way forward. Lift your chest up and over that bent knee. Flatten your hands and release your head down. Just next to your upper arms. Close your eyes and use your exhalation to deeply release. We carry a lot of tension in and around the hips. Release as you exhale. And then raise your head. Bring your hands all the way back to your sides. Move the support if you've got one. Lean forward just under your legs so that you can sit back onto your heels again. Just sit for a moment, keep your eyes soft, chest lifted, shoulders back.
So for those of you who are doing the shoulder balance, we can go into the shoulder balance. And then for those who are doing, not doing the shoulder balance, we're going to just do settle banda. You can either use some heavy um, blankets folded on top of each other like that. Just see that they are evenly folded, nice and dense. Or if you've got the foams, you can use two or three foams. So if you're doing the shoulder balance, just go into it, get your props ready. So for those doing settle binder, sit onto the support. You can have something to put your feet onto. So if you have got blocks, you could take them to the wall. Otherwise, you can end up with your legs just bent. But everybody in settle binder goes into it with their legs bent. We lie back. Lift the sacrum and the pelvis forward. Come onto the top of your shoulders. Make sure the support is underneath the sacrum. And then you can straighten your legs onto the support. So you need to see that you end up with your heels on the support. If you don't have the support, that's fine. Just keep your legs bent. And when you feel that you are able to, you move your legs a little bit away from you slowly extending them away from you. If you end up with them straight, you're on the heels and your toes point up to the ceiling, palms up to the ceiling. Just relax and release into this pose. The only thing really working here is that your chest is lifted, you're on the top of your shoulders. The upper spine, the thoracic spine is lifting up into the chest, keeping it open. And those in the settle bundle, which is the bridge. If you feel any strain on your back, just bend your legs again. And that should bring immediate release to the lower back. And remember, when you come out of it, so you want to stay there for another minute or two or three, when you come out of it, you need to lift your pelvis and move all your props away from you. And come down slowly, lengthening the lower back and the tailbone away from you. And for those of you who are in the shoulder balance, remember we're using the, the um, props, you know how to use them. So just press down into your elbows. If you've got a strap on the elbows, it helps a lot, but don't change that now. It's a good thing to practice with. It allows your elbows not to slip out to the side. So really press down into your elbows and then move your hands so that they come further down towards the floor and gently press there from the back of the body towards your chest, chest moving towards your chin. Very nice. It brings you nice and straight. Allow your outer hips now to compact. There can't be a softness in the hips when in the Savanga sign, the shoulder bones. Yes, outer hips tightening towards the inner hips. Inner thighs moving back. Front thighs moving back and inner thighs moving back. When you feel the weight of the body come into the hands, move your hands lower down again. Press down into your elbows. Keep that lift. So for those in the shoulder balance, you can bring your feet into Baddha Konasan. Feel that even connection from the heel all the way up to each of the toes, gently connecting. Check in that you're not moving the weight into the hands. Very nice. Take your legs all the way up again. Slowly with control. See that your back is still perpendicular to the floor. And then bring your feet over into high larsen. So your toes come down to the floor. If they don't come to the floor, it's fine. Just stay up. You, if you've got the wall, you've lined up to the wall, you could use the wall. And now 
release your hands from your back, interlace your hands, so straighten your arms away from you, interlace your hands behind you and away from you. Keep your front thighs lifting up away from the floor. This is the instructions for those who are in the shoulder balance. Inner thighs lifting up to the ceiling. Very nice. And now bend your legs, bring your knees into Karna Pidasan, so your knees come towards the outer ears. You can release your hands to the back of your knees now. If possible in this pose, see if you can point your toes away from you. So that is the final when you on the top of your feet. If you're slipping, just tuck your toes under again. Just stay there for a moment. Those in Satobanda, the bridge, bend your legs if you haven't already. Put your feet onto the floor. Don't be in a hurry coming out of this and never roll to the side. Press down into your feet and lift your hips. And take the support up. Keep your hips lifted. Come down very slowly. Your hips are level as you're coming down, lengthening the lower back and the tailbone away from you to release onto the floor. So those in Karnapid Asan, you can release your hands and just roll back, let your buttock roll back to the bolster or whatever support you used in coming back or coming into it all the way back. And remember when you come out of the shoulder balance, slide off your prop once, you, once you're all the way off. Slide your head and shoulders off the prop and just have your hips on the whatever support you are using. Those who have come out of Setubanda, just hug your knees and roll gently side to side. And then prepare to relax and Shavasan. Um, have something under the back of your head, at least. Make sure you're warm enough. So remember those with any back, um, sore back or any problems in the back, you can put your calves up onto the chair. You could have a bolster under the back of your legs, which is most delicious. But the most important thing is actually how you get into it. Don't just flop down, go into it with your legs bent, Lie back, keep your legs bent while you adjust the head support so that it comes under not only the back of the head, it touches the top of your shoulders. Take your arms out to the sides, palms up, and then you can extend your legs forward. Let your feet roll to the side. See that your shoulders are moving down your back, broadly down your back. Buttocks flesh releases away from you. And the back of your neck is long and soft, chin moving down towards your chest. And here you can close your eyes. If you've got eye cover, you can use that. Otherwise, just gently close your eyes. Let the upper eyelid join to the lower eyelid. So we worked quite strongly with the gluteal region and the piriformis. So there's a, it's a big release of any sort of negative emotions and back pains. So now in Shavasana, you really get to reap these benefits. So let go of this body that's worked hard. Welcome this grounding feeling as you allow the front of the body to deeply release to the back body and to the earth below. Let the tip of the tongue move away from the front teeth. Releasing deeply into the lower palate and towards the back of the throat.
and let the eyes follow deeply in towards the back of the skull. Soften the ears deeply in towards the inner ears. And where these senses meet the back of the head, allow them to soften and melt down with the brain and the awareness down into the heart center, the heart chakra. And if your mind wanders, connect to your breath and allow it to bring you back to this inner sanctuary where you can completely surrender. Allow your breath to start to lengthen. And with each inhalation, it comes in, filling into every cell in the body, love and good health. Bring your hands onto your abdomen area and bend your knees. And then slowly roll over to your right so that your right arm is up and overhead. So you use that right arm as a pillow and stay in the fetal position for a moment. We've spoken a bit about the, um, the yamas. We spoke the other day about nonviolence, ahimsa. And I'll just read a little today from um, just about uh, satya, which is not lying and truthfulness. 
This means to be true to your inner self and to express your heart's truth openly and freely in speech and action. When thoughts, words, and deeds are all one, we live an integrated life and are a part of the unity that we feel all around us. The truth has a power that we are able to use, use consciously and unconsciously to further everything we do. Use your left hand to press into the floor and come sit up. Bring your head up last. Come up slowly. Sit on something. And just close with your hands in the prayer position. Namaskarasan. Leave your, let your head relax down to your heart as your heart rises and opens up. Let's move through this beautiful day with a deep sense of truth, love, and peace. Thank you, everybody. Namaste. Hope you all have the most beautiful, wonderful day. Lots of love. <laughs>